Everybody, welcome to Ecuador News. Today we're going to be covering the energy crisis in Ecuador in detail from causes to solutions. Let's get started. Breaking news just in. The government announces a national blackout on September the 18th from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. the following day. The reason for this blackout is so that a lot of maintenance can be done at the same time across the country and not affect the grid. And this gets to one of the root causes as to why we're in a national energy crisis in Ecuador, and it's only going to get worse in the next few months. The lack of maintenance, ongoing maintenance with previous governments for a long period of time certainly has contributed to a good portion of this energy crisis. But the major cause, the major contributor, really has been about the multi-year drought in South America. So let's talk about that. Now, although the drought has not been ongoing in Ecuador, it's only been a few months ago where on Ecuador News, we've been talking about some of the landslides because of the huge amount of rain that we've been getting. So we seem to be going from one extreme to the other, but the drought season in Ecuador is getting longer and getting more severe, hence the energy crisis. Uh, most of the electricity in Ecuador is produced by hydroelectric power. So we need those reservoirs filled with water. And you can see from this map of South America, these red areas, uh, and you'll be able to see the Ecuador side in the north, east and uh, east of Ecuador over the Amazon, where normally it would be quite wet, is very, very dry right now. Also into the south and into the northeast. And you can see from this bar graph of the level of water in one of the major reservoirs, it's now dropping and dropping fast as we head into the drought season. You can see the maximum level, and it was at its height during the time we were having a lot of rain. The reservoir was filled, and you can now see that it's starting to approach the lowest levels in its ability to produce electricity. The Ecuador government is looking at a number of solutions to supplement the electricity already produced by the hydroelectric power plants. One of them is the barges that they have an agreement with the Turkey company, uh, and there's currently one barge that is now already delivering energy to the country. Right now it's in an experimental phase, but will be moving to production very soon. Another option is increased incentives to private enterprise to produce electricity with their own projects within Ecuador. The tenders are out and we shall see if there's any success on this front. Also recently announced by the government is an incentive plan for people to keep their electricity bills low. For the months of December, January, and February, if you have under 180 kilowatt hours for each of those months, you will have no charges for electricity. If your bills are over than 180 kilowatt hours, apparently you will still save on the first 180 kilowatt hours. But obviously, if you don't want to pay anything for your electricity bills, you want to keep that amount low. Now, most Ecuadorians on the lower income scale will have very small uh, electric bills normally anyway. So uh, this is a good scheme to be able to supplement um, and reduce the expenses of the poor in Ecuador, as they will for sure get uh, free electricity for three months. In the province of Guayas, the World Bank will finance $100 million for the rehabilitation of the rural roads in that province. This is key since a lot of the gross domestic product in Ecuador is produced in that province, and this will certainly help facilitate a better infrastructure. Additionally, Ecuador has received an additional $10 million as part of a $25 million package from the United States for security purposes. Now, I will be covering how the United States election coming up in November 
will affect Ecuador. So stay tuned for a future episode of Ecuador News and we'll go into detail about uh, the result of that election and how it will either favor favorably or negatively affect Ecuador. At the request of Nabor, the Security Commission will investigate the alleged manipulation of homicide figures during past President Rafael Correa's administration. Now, we don't really know whether there's any substance to this at all, given that there's an election coming up in Ecuador as well in early 2025. This merely could be, you know, trying to affect public opinion around um, the left wing uh, aspect within Ecuador. Um, or there could be truth to it, because during the Korea administration, that was some of the lowest homicide figures that we've had in Ecuador uh, in decades. So we shall see whether uh, which way this one goes. I don't personally at this point, I don't put a lot of uh, faith into the numbers, but could totally be uh, wrong. Let's see what the numbers show. Tourism has dropped significantly within Ecuador, especially in the provinces that have a state of emergency, it has the worst hotel occupancy in three years. Let's have a look at uh, some of those provinces now. Probably one of the worst affected is the Manabe area. Um, big tourism in uh, Manta, as well as north of Manta, all those little beach towns and all the way south into Puerto Lopez on the coast. And you can see the occupancy rate has dropped down to around 30 percent. Um, and that's just not good enough to keep people employed. And of course, there's been a lot of uh, bad publicity around the, the Monta area with cartels. And that certainly uh, has uh, affected uh, tourism, not just from outside Ecuador, but even from the big cities going on to the coast, which is what happens on a pretty regular basis. People leaving Cuenca, people moving from Guayaquil, going further up the coast. Um, and you can see the other decreases in the other provinces as well. Now, hopefully, as the numbers continue to get better on the homicide front, um, and we head into a new year and the official numbers come out on how we did in 2024, uh, that will rebound and we will uh, move forward on the tourism front because that's a big part of the economy uh, within Ecuador and supplying money into these small beach towns like the one, uh, like the one that I live in. Thanks a lot for watching Ecuador News. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already and set your notifications on so you'll be notified when there's new videos coming out on our channel, which is usually about once a week on Sundays. And lastly, but not least, thanks to the gringo. I forget who it was who offered to buy me a real uh, hat as opposed to this sort of $5 hat that I got in Montanita. But one of the things I love about Ecuador is all the deals I can get. In fact, sometimes the deals are so fantastic, you don't even have to bargain with the person. It's like, oh, okay, so this is my $5 hat and I'm enjoying it very much. Anyway, take care. And remember, live the life you love.